So guys, in this presentation, you'll meet uh, animals all around the world um, that I've had the pleasure of meeting and photographing over the last decade or so. Uh, you'll meet rescued farmed animals. You will meet rescued Asiatic and, um, sun and moon bears. You will meet rescued gorillas in Cameroon. You'll also meet these amazing group of uh, people who were poachers who now, now go into the forest in Uganda to remove uh, snares from the forest. And uh, this is my favorite part of my work, is photographing all the heroes and uh, all the heroes around the world who are doing big things and small things to help animals. This is Ron. He lives at Save the Chimps, which is a sanctuary in Florida. They have about 300 chimpanzees there that have been rescued from entertainment and from uh, biomedical research. He, um, he has... If you're wondering about the room and where he is, he actually has a huge sanctuary and friends that he can play with and he can go outside and do what he likes. But after you know being in, uh, in a cage, in a small cage the size of just about like this for over 30 years, he's used to that kind of space. Some of them really adapt to uh, the larger sanctuary spaces, but he never really wanted that. And um, while he was kept in captivity, they would... Uh, I wouldn't even call that captivity, while they had this, in this small cage for 30 plus years, they would sometimes give him a blanket. And that was his only comfort, and that's what he knew. And um, so even though he has all these other things now, his comfort are blankets. So that's what you see around him. He makes himself a little nest of, of blankets, and that's his, like literally his security blanket. I'll go back to him at the end of the presentation. You can learn more about him then. A little bit about me. Uh, how did I become an animal rights photojournalist? My mom gave me some really good advice. Figure out what you love to do and then find a way to make a living doing it. it seems really simple, but anyway, remember that. <laughs> so what do I love to do? I love to travel, love taking pictures, endlessly curious about the world around me. This is in India. He's one of the thousands of vendors there in the small town. That's his, that's his store. And I love volunteering to help animals. I've met all sorts of interesting people along the way, and I always include this because he's just so funny. I was taking lots of pictures of him as he combed his hair in a little mirror. <laughs> he didn't know I was shooting him. <laughs> and uh, eventually the camera became my tool, um, my all-access pass into the lives of others. Now, before you guys write me off as just some rich girl who gets to travel around having fun, I'll let you know that I am a commercial photographer as well. Uh, I shoot events and portraits and weddings and stuff like that, and that funds the We Animals project. Also, a lot of people envision the left um, in terms of what photographers do, travel to exotic locations, party like rock stars and take pictures, but the right is definitely a lot more accurate to my lifestyle. It's, taking pictures here is 12%, but I'd say it's probably actually maybe even 5% of what I do. In other words... <laughs> I have a desk job. <laughs> so before I started doing the animal stuff, I was traveling around having a good time and I photographed um, for three consecutive years the Tibetan Children's Village in northern India. Uh, this is an orphanage with thousands of Tibetan kids. It's a really, really great place. Even the kids as young as four uh, take part in cooking of the meals, doing their own laundry. And uh, in the, when they get to their classrooms in the morning, they have to take part in cleaning the classroom. So this is them actually wiping down the windows as part of the cleaning. They do everything. And they live in groups of sometimes 15 to 20 uh, per bedroom. And I love this photo because of the David Beckham poster. <laughs> <laughs> Beckham is everywhere. <laughs> And it's, it's, a, it's a really, really great place, but they don't have a lot of money. They're really poor up there, and what they give the kids for breakfast is usually a little piece of dough and coffee. So this is a four-year-old girl drinking coffee in the morning, which is pretty sad. And this is what happens to kids when you give them coffee. <laughs> anyway, sort of a trick question, but can anyone hazard a guess as what's missing from these pictures? Anyone? Adults. adults. There are no adults. There are no animals. <laughs> There's no color. <laughs> but it is a trick question. Um, what I hadn't realized at the time was that um, I wasn't yet using my camera for a tool for social change. And I was having a great time. It was for me. Like, I was taking pictures. It was, I, was, I was taking is, is the word here. Um, and I went back to Canada, and I showed my photos to 
uh, this really famous, wonderful photographer named Larry Towell, and he's my mentor. And I went back with these beautiful pictures, and I was going on and on about how I wanted to be a famous photographer, and aren't my pictures great? And he said, what's your point? And that really hurt, but it's good to have mentors like that who challenge you. And he really made me think about, well, what's my point? Why am I doing this? And he's part of what politicized me. Um, he also said, he also said, do what you love, like do, do what you know. So I turned the camera towards things that were more important to me. But back to these kids, um, instead of just taking the photos for me and for my enjoyment, uh, for my career, I started just um, changing that whole formula so that I was giving back all the time. So the money raised, I had an exhibit, and the money raised from uh, these photos ended up going back to the Tibetan Children's Village. And that felt right. Like, that felt, OK, I'm on, I'm on track here. This is, this is more along the lines of what I want to do. I want to be empathetic in my work. I want to be compassionate and, uh, and giving in my work. Oops. Uh, so empathy, we all, of course, know what this is. It's to put one's, ourselves in someone else's shoes. And uh, that's what I started doing with animals. And that's how uh, the We Animals Project came to be. Uh, I wasn't always traveling for We Animals. Um, I started close to home. And this is an example of that. It's hard to tell what's going on in this picture. Uh, this is... Um, at this pet expo thing, and this is the stupid dog trick contest. And his stupid dog trick is to put his dog's entire head in his mouth, which, you know, like, uh, is very funny. Everyone's, everyone's enjoying the stupid dog trick. But I wanted to show things from animals' perspective. And as funny as it is to everyone, what, what does the animal feel about that? And uh, this is what we animals really tries to do, is to show things from the animal's perspective or from the you know, the other perspective, and there's a lot of compassionate people in this room, and we know what it's like to um, think from the point of view of, of the animal and worry about that and be sad about that. But most of the people don't think that way, um, not regularly anyway, so that's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, like this alligator tourism place in Florida. Um, it's really fun for all the tourists to be able to hold this exotic animal, but what is it like for this alligator who lives in a box and has his or her face taped up all day? Same with the bullfights. Um, and it's the same with rodeos in Canada. Um, not fun for the animals, despite the revelry and the music and, and the parties that go along with this. If we put ourselves in the animal's shoes, it's a completely different experience. Anyone have any questions so far? OK. Uh, so Bruce Friedrich from Farm Sanctuary is uh, really pushing this right now. And it's become a tenet of the We Animals project, that animals are someone, not something. And if you can get people to uh, think like that, it changes their whole worlds, as you know. So taxidermy, uh, who knows what this girl was doing. She was walking down a street in New York City with this deer head. Um, people thought it was funny and interesting, but I thought it was sad and out of place and really wanted to document it. And um, zoos really aren't what they could be. Uh, this is an extreme example. This is a zoo in Thailand. So this is a penguin who, you, you know, they live in groups of tens or hundreds of thousands. They travel hundreds of miles, but this is a lone penguin in the heat of Thailand with a dingy little pool living alone. Um, I, I bet you a lot of us in this room see this picture and we see how wrong it is, but what about all the other people? What about most of the people, right, who are looking at this? And how can we get them to see from the animal's point of view and see that it's unfair? Same with the Calgary Zoo um, in Canada. Uh, pretty exciting to see a hippo, but what about, how does the hippo feel about living his or her life in this small pool for their lives. Uh, we Animals is also about bearing witness. Um, so there are a lot of difficult images, and those need to be seen. So a lot of sad stuff. Um, always contrasted, though, with the happy endings. That last pig was in um, a transport truck going to slaughter. But this pig, her name is Julia, and she was rescued uh, this year by Farm Sanctuary. Uh, she had a really incredible story. I'll keep it short. Uh, the main point is that when she was rescued and brought to Farm Sanctuary, within hours, she gave birth to 16 piglets. Now, pigs only have 14 nipples. <laughs> so <laughs> she needed help, and she was really traumatized from a life in a factory farm. But this is her only weeks later. And she went from being a traumatized individual to um, she, she's coming up to me. You know, I'm crouched down low, and she's coming up to me, up to my camera to say hello to me. 
And it, those stories, you know, like some people are affected by the, the difficult imagery and the sad stories and it creates change in them, but some people can't look at that, as you know, and are really moved instead by the, the positive stories. Actually, uh, Tim Patcherat, he wrote a really great book called Every 12 Seconds. He was undercover in a slaughterhouse for uh, six months. And he, he actually, he was vegetarian, but he didn't go vegan through all of that. And he went vegan when he met one cow. Like, it was a cow slaughterhouse. And he went vegan when he met a rescued cow months later at Woodstock Farm Sanctuary. So the good stories are important, too. It's really important for us to, like, to meet those rescued animals because they're ambassadors. A lot of you know this woman, of course, Jane Goodall. And she says, only if we understand can we care, and only if we care will we help. True, 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 true. Mission statement, it's a big mission, <laughs> aims to, we animals aims to raise awareness through art and photojournalism that non-human animals are sentient beings with moral significance and deserve to live free from exploitation and suffering in the food, clothing, experimentation, and entertainment industries. Huh, mostly though, um, good photos speak a thousand words and um, can change hearts and minds, so that's my job. Um, there are a lot of activist photos out there, but they're not good enough to really move people. And uh, if we can actually all, it's not just me who, who can do it, like we can all get better at, at photographing animal issues and use those images to change things. Uh, in this image, what you're looking at, she's um, a 20 minute old uh, calf who had been just taken away from her mom and being, was being put into a veal crate. Um, they didn't know if she was gonna become a veal calf or a dairy cow and she eventually went on to be a dairy cow. She's about two years old now and they actually named her Joanne. I was I was there undercover, and and uh, they named her after me. <laughs> I'm still traumatized by that. <clears throat> Challenge for the We Animals Project is to document things in such a way that the viewer finds new significance in these ordinary, often unnoticed situations of use, abuse, and sharing of spaces. So getting us to notice, getting us to open our eyes to what animals go through, like all these fish and... Um, aquatic animals here who are being sold in little plastic bags. There's even a stingray in there and there are little turtles in there as well. So yes, making us question what is normal, like going to a rodeo and celebrating calf roping, and trying as much as possible to show situations from the perspective of the non-human animal. This uh, rabbit slaughterhouse kills 50, uh, 400 rabbits an hour. How's everyone doing? <laughs> I promise if I bring you down, I'll bring you up. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> uh, so in 2008, I uh, was hired by ZooCheck and WISPA to go to zoos across Canada, again, to show things from the perspective of the animal. I can barely look at this picture because it's just so blasphemous. Like, take everything that's beautiful and wonderful about, about an animal and do this to it. Put it in a small cage. Um, for our, you know, for our education, but I would definitely argue that this is no education and not beneficial to us or the animal. And getting people to, you know, to see these images or see the animals and, and think differently. <laughs> Same with this one. I include this one because of that big blue sky in the background. I find that sky just so cruel. Uh, this was the Edmonton Zoo, and they the, they didn't take the time to um, open up the bales of straw for the birds to, to use, so the birds just sat on the, uh, on the bales of straw all day. What we see and what we are shown is the surface of things, like going to circuses. There's, you know, the lights and the music and the fanfare. It's easy to get caught up in this stuff, but what goes on behind the scenes? Well, this is the, often the way the animals are treated. This is the way they're transported. It's no life for them. And I really like this, this cartoon. <laughs> It was heartbreaking <laughs> and it's very, very smart. I never go anywhere without tea. <laughs> Drink tea all day. <clears throat> uh, another topic that We Animals is looking at is cognitive dissonance, which is, of course, our inconsistency between our beliefs and our actions. This. Um, this, he's like my poster boy for this. He's about six years old. I was photographing um, a matador at training school, and he was learning, and I asked him why he wanted to be a matador when he grew up a bullfighter, and uh, he said because he loves bulls. <laughs> 